For the last couple of weeks, I've been playing around with upscaling certain parts of the 1966 missing serial, The Savages. Loose Cannon's Reconstruction is a brilliant production, which I have watched and adored over many years, but technology has come a long way since 2008, so I thought I'd have a go at upscaling it using various techniques. The programs we are demonstrating today are Topaz Gigapixel AI, Remini, and the Adobe Suite. Before we start, I do not claim to be an expert in upscaling. I am simply testing out these programs. This is not a tutorial, it's more of my first-hand experience. Gigapixel AI uses artificial intelligence to upscale images, leading to mixed and decent results in my opinion. With all AI upscaling, it should be seen as a first step, not the final product. Before placing the Telesnap in the program, I would open it in Photoshop and apply a motion blur at 90 degrees and 2 pixels to remove the horizontal banding. The horizontal lines get picked up by the AI software and it can create some pretty awful artifacts. Basically, you drag and drop your image into Gigapixel, choose the scale, I chose times 4, any more than that and I think it's a bit too grainy. I enabled face refinement and chose auto, but that's not always the right option for every photo, but for this test it'll be fine. Then we move on to the mobile app, Remini, or Remini, I'm still not sure how to pronounce it. We import the upscaled photo and let it do its thing. It doesn't explain how its AI works, but it only remasters the face of the image. Sometimes the app just can't pick a face and won't upscale it, which sucks. But the amount of clarity it can get from a tiny telesnap is quite impressive. If you're doing a full length reconstruction like I am, the fact that it can't detect certain faces can be quite annoying. Because one image will be quite high res and then the next one won't, and it can be quite jarring. But ultimately in the end, there's not much you can really do. Now we move into Photoshop. We use the Gigapixel upscaled image as the base and only use the upscaled face segment from the Remini upscale. I lower the transparency to reintroduce some grain that had been taken away by the app. Grain is commonly mistaken for poor image quality, but by removing too much grain, you lose a lot of visual information. So I tend to bring it back in for a crisper image. Then we remove any smudges and scratches from the image and use Photoshop's Content Aware Fill to fill in the border to restore its 4x3 aspect ratio. I've cleaned this up further in my final composition, but this was just an example to show you guys. When we compare them side by side, the results are kind of crazy. Is it perfect? Definitely not. But that slight improvement on image quality can really make the final product more watchable. And I think a lot of people don't realise the importance of image quality when you're watching something. Remastering screen grabs from existing episodes is a different ball game. It is a lot easier. Since there is more information in the image, Remini doesn't require an initial upscale and can work by itself. I take the original screen grab and then place the Remini upscale over it and lower the transparency until the contrast matches. Remini, in my opinion, can add too much contrast and it won't look like an actual screen grab. Steven wears a turtleneck in The Savages and this screen grab is from the Time Meddler where he wears a cloak over a turtleneck, so I've had to remove the cloak from each shot. This can have mixed results, but ultimately he needs to be wearing the correct costume. Dodo thankfully wears the same costume in this as she does in The War Machines, once you've got all your elements, it's really a process of drag and drop, adding blur to give depth of field and contrast correction. If it's a dialogue scene, it's really the easiest part of the whole process. I've also used Autodesk Maya, or Maya, is it Maya? 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 To build 3D sets, but haven't used them in the upscaling project as of yet, so I'm not going to go into it. I think a lot of people think AI upscaling is just pressing a button, so I just wanted to show you all why it's not that easy. It is time consuming. In Remini, you have to individually remaster each photo, and because it remasters on their server, it doesn't matter how fast your processing system is, it depends if they can get it back to you fast enough. Sometimes one image can take up to three minutes, and time is money. Sometimes the results are great, sometimes they're beastly. Sometimes it chooses to remaster the image and sometimes it doesn't. 
I think there is a future in this technology, and I hope one day we'll get beautiful HD Doctor Who recons, and I'll be keeping my peepers on this tech. But at the moment, do I think it's likely that the BBC are going to be doing this for the Blu-ray releases? I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. My project is in its super early days, and I probably won't even complete it due to, luckily, working full time which many people during this crisis can't really say, so I am very thankful. I hope you're all staying home and staying safe. To those who can't work from home, I applaud you. You are amazing, talented and brilliant and should be given this praise all year round. Stay home and stay safe. Or else.